The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Much. Hello Rovers fans and a very big Merry Christmas to you as we preview the next game. Hull City away on Boxing Day but before that we've got lots of turkey and presents to open and as you can see joined by Dan the man. How are you doing Dan? Yeah I'm good I'm looking forward to this one another, uh, another game that we can hopefully win. You always say you're looking forward to them. You just look forward to every game. You're a, you're a good egg, Dan, a good fan. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. So uh, we'll get stuck into it in a moment. But just first thing we want to say uh, at the time of recording this match preview, last night was our very big live stream, all in aid of the Sporting Memories Foundation. Um, Joe, Glenn and Dan, you did a brilliant job over at the Avenue. Uh, loads of good fun and and stuff over the three hours. And we're delighted to say that at the moment, we have raised over £1,200. Um, so that obviously says money raised tonight there. That is the graphic we flashed up last night. There is still time to donate, www.rcdonate.com. Just a reminder that we've got a half-season ticket up for grabs and a John Buckley signed shirt, as well as a meal at the Avenue where they recorded yesterday and some sixyardsout.com merchandise as well. So plenty of incentive to be in the hat to win it. Every pound equals a raffle ticket entry. So go to rcdonate.com and we'll draw that on New Year's Eve. And just a big reminder, um, a big thank you to our sponsors, sixyardsout.com and Blue Rose Capital for their kind sponsorship. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then why are you not? Hit that subscribe button and please give this video a very big like for us. So let's get stuck into the preview, Dan. Um, we'll start where we always start, which is talking about the previous result. And it's been really nice talking about previous results recently. Rovers, obviously, the form side in the division at the moment. And um, yeah, this Birmingham game was a strange one, wasn't it? Because it felt like a game where there was pressure and expectation on Rovers to get the job done. And you got to say we did that. And the early goal from John Buckley really settled the nerves. And in the second half, we just took it to another level and, and really exploited a poor Birmingham side. So, you know, what were your thoughts before going into that game and, and how did you feel after it? Yeah, I think, as you say, it was one of them I felt we could slip up on and then you see Middlesbrough beat Bournemouth at dinner time and in the early kickoff. And I think the, ner the nerves went up after that result. I was sat there thinking, we're a point off the uh, top two if we win and that brought the nerves and then just everything around it, I just couldn't shake off them nerves. And then the moment Buckley scored that, I thought, we'll go and score three or four this game and we'll go and win it easily. And we did. And I think it's nice to have that feeling. We've done it many times. We've spoke many times about Rovers being one up, two up and being a bit worried. But it's almost a confidence now, isn't it, that you think Rovers will score it again and again rather than the opposition scoring. And that shows you just how much we believe in this team and... Just how good the team is, really. And hopefully with Fulham off on Boxing Day and Bournemouth off, uh, Bournemouth don't play until the day after, we could be in the top two come 5pm on Boxing Day. So I'm, uh, that's why I'm looking forward to it more than anything. There's some real incentive there, isn't there? And I think um, just a couple of things on, on what you've said there. You know, that image that we've currently got there, we've seen plenty of images like that in recent weeks where all the squad are celebrating together. They're rejoicing with the fans after the game. And, you know, it really is a close-knit squad, which that's why it just feels a bit different for me this season. It's a real united effort and they clearly love the team. They love each other. And, and I think that that will see us over the line and, and help us into those playoff spots. And then the other thing about the Birmingham game, I thought the first two goals we scored, they just came at really good times, you know, to settle the nerves really early with that John Buckley goal. 1-0 at halftime was great, but we were still a bit susceptible to a long throw-in or Troy Deeney getting on on the end of something. To then score early in that second half with that Red Akadra goal as well, to be 2-0 up, what was it, 51, 52 minutes into the game at 2-0. I knew it was done and dusted at that point. And then, you know, the goals that, that we scored, you know, the third and fourth ones, you know, that was just icing on the cake and just a great afternoon all round. So, 
yeah, we obviously move on. Um, Hull away on Boxing Day. Now, despite our very comfortable win against them earlier on in the season and obviously our good home form in general, um, this is not an easy game for Rovers. Um, Hull are fifth in the form table overall. They've got three wins, two draws and, and one loss in the last six games. So not as easy as some people might think it is. But how are you feeling about the game, Dan? Because I'm just weirdly a little bit anxious. I, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. I'm 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 a bit nervous. How about you? Yeah, I think it's that nerves of being in the position we're in, isn't it? With the chances we have now to break into the top two. I think... Uh, they are a good side at the moment. They're in good form. I know they lost last time to Forest, but I'm looking at that. When they went 1-0 up against Forest last Saturday, they were second in the form table behind us. Mm. They are. They have come into their own. I mean, compared to the side we played when they come to Ewood, I think they're a completely different side. I do think we're a better side, and I do think we have better players. And they do have a few COVID issues, which we'll, I'm sure we'll come on to discuss, but it's one of them, isn't it? It's you get into this position and every game feels like a banana skin almost. You feel like we should win, but mm. you know that when you get your com- when the confidence is high, you can easily be brought back down in the championship. And for me, it is one of them. It's one of them I could see us going and losing, but it's one I could see us winning three or four in them. Yeah, and and just looking at the league win, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And just looking at where they are in the table, you know, the recent form has uh, has actually been really helpful for them because they're only four points above the drop zone. So without that recent surge in form, they'd probably be within that bottom three. Um, And I think you're right, Dan, you know, it is another one where there's going to be expectation from fans. But I think as a fan base, we might just need to calm down a little bit. You know, we need to start just breaking it down into little chunks in the season. So the next three games for me, feel quite pivotal in the season and I'm happy if we took seven points from the next three games so we could go to Hull and draw win our two home games seven points from the next three that gets us to 49 points come the 2nd of January which would just be absolutely fantastic and then as you said earlier that incentive that you know we can actually go second with a win with Bournemouth playing QPR the day after so as a, what do you think we need to do as fans because This is a young squad and we can't be expecting them to just win, 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 win. There's going to come a time where it kind of flattens a little bit. Um, You know, would you be happy with a draw, for example, on Boxing Day? Or or do you want that win to go second? You know, where are you sitting on that? I do want that win. I think we've got to look at it as... I think we'd be looking to beat them if we were 15th in the league. Never mind being third. And just a quick mention to what you said about 50 points. I think we spoke about this on a preview about eight or nine games into the season and we said get to 50 points and see where we are and obviously look where we are now when we're speaking about it but back to the game I think I look at Hull as I think I've always seen it as a game we should win no matter where we play them I think it's Mowbray's best record as Rovers manager against Hull it's just one of them for me we I'd take a point but I want three and I think we should get three and I think we will get them I mean, just looking at their home form as well, um, you know, they are pretty low in terms of uh, home form. They've picked up 12 points, which is third worst in the division. Three wins, three draws, five defeats. So it is a ground that we can go there and get the result. As you say, Dan, Mowbray's got a good record against Hull. I've been to Hull a few times and seen us win. So it is a ground where we've had some joy before. So I think that, you know, in the interest of balance, you know, I was just bringing the whole draw thing in. But absolutely, it's a game that we've got to be going and thinking, right, if you are serious about the top six, Hull away with the greatest respect to them. It's another one where you don't fear them. We've been to Bournemouth and won. You know, what a result. Next away game, you know, bang, we've got to go and hit Hull City, haven't we? So um, it would just be so nice, wouldn't it, to be sat second on Boxing Day after that whole game, you know, what an incentive for this squad. What a bloody incentive. So, fingers crossed, Rovers, come on. So, um, team selection-wise then, Dan, you know, we've bigged up the occasion of the game. Um, team selection, Mowbray has stayed pretty faithful uh, to the side in recent weeks. The only change that we've really seen is Thomas Kaminsky. Um, obviously, he's been out injured. Ainsley Pears came in and then Kaminsky came back uh, on Saturday. So, um, you know, that side is picking itself again, isn't it? It's got a real nice balance. It's got a real nice blend. You know, Van Hecker sits at the base of that back three. It allows Scott Wharton and Daryl Enihan to pick out passes down their channels. 
Niambi and Pickering are really solid as wingbacks defensively. Then obviously you've got the midfield of Joe Rothwell, Travis Buckley, and then the man in form Diaz alongside Reda Kadra. So this is a side now where people have got to be, you know, if you're Sam Gallagher, if you're Tyrese Dolan, if you're Bradley Dak, if you're Bradley Johnson, you've literally got to be ripping the shirts off these players, haven't you? I think that's it. I think that's what we love to see as well. I think we spoke a few weeks ago and we said, when this player comes back, where are they going to fit in? And it stayed mm. the same every week. And when you look at Daniel Ayala, don't you? And you think, probably our best player before that injury, other than mm. Diaz maybe, and he can't get in the side. Sam Gallagher, I know he gets stick, but he's always been picked by Mowbray when he's fit and he's he always pops up and does stuff and he can't get in the side in a central striker position. Like we say, you look at probably that when he comes back, where mm. does he fit in the side? Because I don't think he takes any of that midfield free. I don't think he takes any of them positions. No. I don't think we change formation because it's working so well. So, I mean, what do you do? And that is a positive to have. And every player on that pitch would feel hard done by if they didn't start this game. And I think that's an excellent thing to have, really. And this is just another one of those kind of building blocks for why I think we're going to come in the top six. So last season, it felt like we had a squad which was just, you know, stacked full of talent, but we never really had a settled side. This season, it seems to be a smaller unit, but we seem to be getting that little bit of luck with injuries. And as you say, we've got players who are chomping at the bit on the bench, Ayala, Gallagher, Dolan, you know, those players that you've mentioned. And we've seen sides get promoted from this division before where they have that little bit of luck where it's a consistent selection. I've said before on other streams that I can still name, you know, Leeds' side that got promoted, Villa's side that got promoted, even Burnley's side that got promoted. You can yeah. name them. And I think we're now getting into that territory where if you're a neutral fan in the championship, you could probably pick that side. You know, if you were seeing Rovers on Sky Sports or, or anything like that, you'd be picking it. And I just think, it really does help. And and the players that are coming on, and we'll come on to the subs now, you know, they are coming on and making an impact. Danny Butterworth on Saturday, I mean, he looked brilliant on Saturday. He came on and I was just, that shot that he rocketed against the crossbar, like that just would have been absolutely perfect if that had gone in. Bradley Johnson came on, that ball that he dinked over for Joe, um, uh, for Ben Brer uh, no, for Butterworth, sorry, to ping it across the box. He made an impact. Sam Gallagher, you know, he always makes an impact off the bench. And, you know, that is all just going in our favour. You know, we're not bringing on academy graduates who have only made one appearance. These are championship tested players that we're bringing on. So we're really getting our look in, and using the squad in that way. So are you sharing that optimism and confidence that I am, Dan? I think that's it. And like you say, probably Johnson promoted with Norwich, been in a playoff side like Derby all really all at time hasn't he and I just think you look at it and it's it's just good isn't it it's good to have Bradley Johnson on the bench Sam Gallagher every time you look at this team I think we've worried in the past that oh no he's bringing such a name on he's bringing this player on but now you can bring Bradley Johnson on and things don't change you can bring Gallagher on and things don't change negatively they change positively I think this is a side that we shouldn't underestimate at all. Now, I think we've shown they've shown us, haven't they, a few times. Mm. And I think just going back to before about uh, what to expect from the side. I think if we're winning games, keep backing them. If we lose a game, keep backing them because you know they'll fight back. They did it against Fulham, and they're going to do it time after time. And do you know what? I've never been as confident with a side playing and I've never been as confident we're getting in the top six as I am with this side and if it doesn't happen and something goes wrong then so be it but I think we should just enjoy this side especially with how they're playing at the moment. I think whilst we're in this run of form you know whilst the players are burning on this confidence it's vitally important if we are to make that top six this is where we pick up our points this is where we create that gap to seventh and eighth spot because then if we do have that little dip sides do naturally have dips we've obviously had some terrible dips after christmas but there will come a time where we're not picking up points so whilst we're burning hot the way that we are at the moment and confidence is brimming through this side vitally important that we pick up the points which is why i'm after the seven points from these next three games then see where we are on the 2nd of January going into that FA Cup game against Wigan. 
you know, let's see where Rovers are and, and how we're feeling about things. Um, you obviously mentioned COVID earlier on, Dan. So just a few things on that. Tyree Stolen um, will be back um, for Rovers after his period of isolation from COVID. Uh, Mowbray did confirm in a press conference today that touch wood, and he touched wood as well from what I understand in the press conference, no other cases in the Rover squad to report. So Rovers are in a good bill of health in that regard. Unfortunately for Hull, it does look like COVID may be starting to take a hold of them. Grant McCann, the manager, is going to be self-isolating at home, so he will not be on the touchline. It'll be his assistant, Cliff Byrne. Um, no news yet whether there's any players that have tested positive. So at this moment in time, on the 23rd of December, the game goes ahead. Unfortunately, four games in the championship have succumbed. Um, if there is a little bit of, you know, COVID going around the whole camp, you know, with Grant McCann not on the touchline, Dan, is this just another thing why we go there and be confident? That's it. And obviously, we wish them all the best in that. But you look at situations, like this, everything seems, and I can't explain it. We've had it so many times. We've word aside with 10 players out, and we're putting random players into fill positions that shouldn't be playing there. And now it's happening to everyone else, isn't it? And it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit weird almost that everything's falling our way at the moment. And like you say, it's a thing to take advantage of. It's picking these points up. We spoke about it last week that there's all these games off, but. You'd much rather be the side that has three points on the board rather than being the one that plays a day later like Bournemouth do at QPR. I'd much rather be in Rovers' situation at the moment. Yeah, I think you look at us and if we're three point, if we get three points and we're in the top two, all the pressure goes on Bournemouth, and it continues to be on Bournemouth with all the squad and the quality of this squad, and we're the only side in the top four that aren't expected to be there and. It'll probably play into our hands. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it would be lovely to put the pressure on Bournemouth with the win and just say, right, over to you. So, um, yeah, definitely. It's just another thing for me that, you know, I think the manager not being on the touchline can really affect sides. So it's just something else that we're going to have to exploit there. Um, so let's agree the side, Dan, as we always do. Um, this is probably really easy. Um I don't think that Tony Mowbray is going to change the side. You know, he's got every confidence in all of these lads. Um, and, you know, Reda Kadra had a great game on Saturday after not having a good game against Bournemouth. You know, he really responded. Van Hecker just looks really solid at the back with Wharton and Lenihan. And everyone else is kind of picking themselves. So do you agree that it's going to be the same side that we saw against Birmingham? And it's saying to the likes of Ayala, Gallagher, Dolan, Dak, Rankin, Costello, Johnson... You gotta get this shirt off me. <laughs> I do, yeah. I mean, it's eight days, isn't it, since we played as well? Yeah. From the last game, so there's no worry for me about not having fresh legs. I think we might see some changes over the Christmas period, but he has to stay the same for me. You stay the same. You're keeping the same side. It's one of those games before we've spoken so many times about constant selections, and for me, we keep the same side. We win this game. Yeah, I think it will be the same side, but boy, what a bench. And, you know, with Bradley Dack coming back soon, Joe Rankin Costello was back in training. You know, it would be so good to have a bench that's got them two on as well. I mean, then you really are talking that we are genuine contenders. And I know that people are doubting Rovers, you know, both from within Rovers fans and outside. Um, if we have got anything that's looking like this starting eleven with a bench made up of six or seven of those other players, and that kind of is consistently through to the end of the season, yeah, there's going to be injuries and suspensions along the way. But if it's roughly that to the end of the season, we've got every chance of of making the playoffs. Obviously, different kettle of fish. You know, if we're having this conversation in May as to whether we get promoted, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I just think that, you know, there's whilst we're burning hot the way we are, we've got every reason to be confident. And I just keep thinking back to that thing Ollie said on the podcast, you know, to if 70 points is the kind of accepted number for playoffs, Rovers need 10 wins in 23 games, which feels like an achievable run of form. Nine wins and three draws. You know, that feels really achievable to me, Dan. So I'm feeling confident. So um, without further ado, then predictions. You can go first this week, Dan. You know, are you going to give us a confident prediction for the game? Yeah, I've got a good record, haven't I? Uh, 
you have. Like I said, I can't see us losing. I think I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I think with a better side, it's a place we've enjoyed a lot of success at over the last five, six years. I don't think I've seen us lose there. And I've been every time we've played them. So for me, I'm going to go for... I'll go 3-1 Rovers. I think they will score and I think they might equalise, they might make it 1-1 and they might even go ahead, but there's no side I've backed more than Rovers to pull the game back. So I'll go for 3-1. I think Wharton deserves a goal. So I'll go Wharton and Diaz double. Wharton and Diaz double. I'm pleased you said about them taking the lead because I think that's the vibe that I've got. I do think they are going to take the lead. I think I've just got this little air of nervousness um, that they're going to do something like that. But I think we're going to come from behind and do it. So I'm going to say 2-1 Rovers. I think Hull are going to take the lead. Uh, and I am going to say that I think Diaz will score. I think that'll be goal number 20 that's up. And then it's going to be the man, Sam Gallagher, off the bench to win it for Rovers. That's what I'm feeling. So 2-1 Rovers from me, 3-1 Rovers from Dan. So Rovers fans, let us know what you think in that comments box. In terms of the side, is Mowbray going to pick the same side that started that Birmingham game? Or can you see him freshening it up maybe? Is Gallagher going uh, to come in? Is Dolan going to come in? Is Ayala going to come in? Should he reward the likes of Bradley Johnson and Dan Butterworth, who played so well when they came on? Let us know what you think in the comments and the predictions as well. Um, are you feeling confident like Dan? Have you got the little air of nervousness like me? Um, let us know what you think in the comments and, and how you think the game will go. But um, yeah, looking forward to it, Dan. Uh, we've got the big thing, which is Christmas Day in the way first. So I hope you have a really nice time with your family and, and enjoy the day, Dan. Um, all the Rovers fans watching um, from everyone at Rovers Chat, just a very Merry Christmas and, and a very Happy New Year. If you're at the game at Hull, we will see you there. Um, if not, obviously, we'll have everything covered as we usually do. Um, stay safe. Um, we've said it before. Christmas is a difficult time for some people, so just know where your support networks are. Rovers chat DMs are always open, whether it's the main account or any of us. Just reach out. Christmas can be difficult for some people, so uh, we'll keep trying to cheer you up as best as we possibly can. And uh, yeah, just another reminder, rcdonate.com. If you did still want to donate to the Sporting Memories Foundation and get your name in the hat to win the half-season ticket, the John Buckley signed shirt, the sixyardsout.com merchandise or a meal at the Avenue. So um, we're really buzzing to have raised so much. So we'll end it there. Please give this video a big like. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And Dan, have a brilliant Christmas, mate. And uh, I'll see you on the other side at Hull. Not on the other side, but on the other side at Hull. Do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a good Christmas, Ryan, you and the family. <laughs> Thanks, mate. See you soon. Cheers, Rovers fans. Cheers. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.